It's Sunday morning with Mark Sainsbury. It is time once again to talk business with uh, the good doctor, Dr. Harold Hillman, uh, leadership coach, author, celebrity speaker. Uh, Harold's in big demand. He, he gets into the... In fact, he, you came over. Fonterra brought you out here originally, didn't they, Harold? From, yeah, I did. I did. You were poached. <laughs> poached. He left He left the bright lights of Manhattan. To go. You must have had culture <laughs> shock when you got here. Uh, li- listen, Mark, I often say that um, my 12 years in New Zealand, I think I've got gotten younger and healthier. It was time to leave New Zealand and come down to here where people have a better perspective on sort of work and life balance. Time to leave man in the U.S. and come down here. Yeah, great idea. Hey, now look, here's something. I know a lot of this comes up a lot and a lot of the people would face this. Yeah. What do you do if you're in a job and you might love the job, you might like the job, but you hate your boss. You just don't like your manager. Yeah, it is. It, it's real for a lot of folks. I mean, you know, um, it's rare when people are best friends with their bosses. Those are sort of, even that can get a little complicated in that realm. But a lot of times we begin to sort of feel, hey, I'm not learning anything from this person or this person's values are different from mine or this person has asked me to do something that I really know is, you know, breaching a particular ethical or legal um, scenario. And sometimes we just don't like a person because of chemistry. And it can be an, a, a it, it's a reckoning that has to be dealt with because the research tells us that the relationship with your boss is, in, in some estimations, the primary determinant of, as to whether or not you're going to stay or leave a company. So that relationship is important. You can't ignore it or sort of work around it. But there must be a difference, Harold, between, say, look, I think my boss doesn't value me or, you know, he doesn't trust me, as opposed to, I just, you know, I have a personal thing. I, 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 you know, I, we, we just, there's something that doesn't click between us. Yeah, that personal thing is one that goes to the heart of trust. And I often ask people when they are deliberating about whether or not they can continue working for somebody they don't respect or like, I often ask them, have you gone over the slippery slope? And, and by, by that I mean, once you've determined that you don't like someone, some, you then often begin to select data to confirm that. So no matter what the person does, it loads on sort of this negative thing. And if you've gotten to that stage where you can't come back from that slippery slope, then I think it's in your best interest to leave the company or arrange, if you can, to work for someone else, if it if it works out that way. Very often, though, people leave in that situation, Mark, where they just can't get beyond a personality clash. If there's this problem between the manager and the employee, who is the onus on to do something about it? I, you know, I really do believe in, in this thing called empowerment, Mark, that sense of um, I'm, at the end of the day, as an employee, I'm ultimately responsible for my own sense of happiness in the organization or in the workplace. And so if I'm miserable, I have to do something about it. And, uh, and because a lot of times managers may not even be aware of what you're thinking or feeling. And, you know, the, 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 you, in the first instance, if you're really trying to keep yourself objective and reasonable, I think you owe it to yourself to go in and have a conversation about the fact that something isn't clicking here. Is there anything we can do to really sort of rev up the uh, quality of the relationship um, so that it can be a little bit more um, energizing for both of us? That type of a thing. Dial your manager in in the first instance if you believe it's safe and constructive to do. See, does that happen sometimes? That it's all about perspective, isn't it? And so sort of, you might think, you've, you know, my boss has got this issue with me or they things they do that really annoy me and therefore I don't like them for it. Yeah. But then when you actually, if you do go and discuss it, you can suddenly discover, oh, oh well, actually, maybe I was reading this wrong or they weren't aware of it. And yeah. It can be resolved. It's like keep yourself objective. Some, you know, if, 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 you're, if your manager is asking you to do something that he or she believes will make a material difference to how the business succeeds and it means that you have to modify the way you interact with someone or the, the attire you wear to a particular bu- business meeting and those types of things, sometimes your manager's suggestions are very pertinent to the success of the business. But in, I, I talked with a woman recently, Mark, who told me that her boss 
told her, you need to be, you know, you need to stop being so joyful in the office. It's irritating. You need to stop being so optimistic. Now, that's crazy because right there, that doesn't have anything to do with the material um, performance of the business. That's just a boss's personal preference that, in my opinion, has crossed the line where you're asking somebody to turn their personality down. Well, it is crossing the line. And more to the point, what sort of boss doesn't want joyful people in the office? Mark, if, if you are a, you know, that, that whole notion of um, quiet means that that people are working. There's some people who believe that a lot of chatter and a lot, it's, it's crazy, but this, this person was told, uh, don't be so joyful. <laughs> See, have you ever been told that? See, you'd be a joyful person in the office, Harold. You better watch yourself. <laughs> that's right. That's right. I've, I've never been told to turn down my optimism, Mark. <laughs> and, you, and there's no shortage of optimism with the good Dr. Harold Hillman. Hey, thanks so much, Harold. Look forward to next week. And don't forget, check out Harold's website, sigmoidcurve.com.